And the next topic uh, is this methods of determining hydraulic conductivity. So now we have introduced Darcy's law. We have introduced this hydraulic conductivity. So how do we determine K for a given soil? Uh, I listed a number of uh, approaches, number of methods. The first one is laboratory or lab methods. And the first one, can, constant head has something you're going to perform in the lab. And then there are also empirical relationships in the field tests. So for lab tests, uh, there are three uh, lab tests that you can use to determine K. And the first two are direct measurements. So they are designed to determine K of soil. The third one, consolidation. This one is something uh, we'll discuss in chapter 11 for consolidation of clays. And during the uh, consolidation test, you can actually indirectly estimate K but that test is not designed specifically for permeability. It's designed to estimate consolidation of soil. Uh, so in this lecture, I'm going to focus on the first two, constant head and the falling head test. Okay. Uh, this slide here, this is uh, basically uh, the constant head permeability test setup. Okay. So our soil specimen, so this is your soil sample. So we have soil specimen here, and then we have porous stone on top and at the bottom. Okay. And during this constant head test, you basically maintain a constant head difference between upstream and downstream. Okay. So this is the inlet, we call that upstream. And this is basically the outlet. The water flows from that inlet to outlet. So that's the direction of flow. And during this constant head test, as the name suggests, you maintain a constant head difference. So this H is the head difference. And this is a constant during this test. So that's why it's called constant head. So once you reach a steady state flow, you're going to get this constant head difference, H. And then this L here, this is the length of the soil specimen. That's basically the distance water travels from up to, the, to downstream. Okay, so that's that L here. And during these experiments, okay, so this, um, we call this small q. Okay. So this is a flow rate. And during the experiment, what you measure, in addition to that H and L, you actually measure the volume of water you collected at downstream over a certain time t. So I call that capital Q. So this is flow rate times T. Okay. So this is volume of water. Collected over time T. So you have this uh, flask here at the uh, downstream. So you can collect water and measure the volume of the water collected over certain time T. Okay. So that's uh, what I call capital Q. And to estimate permeability, uh, we just make use of Darcy's law, basically. So from Darcy's law, you know, flow rate is small k, that's permeability, times i times a. And the a, this is cross-sectional area of the soil specimen. You know this is this is K and this star this is Darcy's law. And if you multiply both sides by time t, you have q equals to small q times t k i a times t. And then you can calculate back calculate permeability. 
So Q, volume of water collected over time t, something measured in the experiments. Cross-sectional area of the soil specimen A, you, you can measure that as well. And then hydraulic conductivity I, by definition, is head loss over distance. In this constant head test, this is simply H. That's a head loss from upstream to downstream over the corresponding distance, capital L. And if you substitute all this into this expression, you can solve for K. So you have this expression uh, QL over AH time T. So that gives you a way to estimate permeability from this constant head test uh, result. So, so that is a, it's a very simple setup. And this is constant head permeability test. And this test, because you have to maintain a constant or a head difference, so you have to reach that steady state flow. So this is mostly used for sands and gravels. So it's suitable for sands, gravels, and maybe coarse suits as well. So it's mostly used basically for coarse grain soil. And the reason is it takes very long time. If you're using fine grain soil, uh, it will take a very long time for the water to reach a steady state to flow through soil. Okay. So this is only mostly for coarse grain soil. And if you're dealing with fine grain soils, like fine suits, then you can use the second type of permeability test. So the second one is called the falling head test. So let me write, add a note here. It's not suitable for finer materials, meaning finer than coarse seals, because uh, the flow rate is very slow. So it's very small. Can now use it for finer soils because it takes very, very long time for water to flow through and reach a steady state. So that leads us to the second type of lab test, and that is called the falling head test. Okay. Uh, so the falling head test, uh, this is a setup of the test. In, in the falling head test, so first this is for finer materials. So in the falling head test, you, uh, you don't need to maintain a constant head difference. So you don't need to wait until water reaches a steady state. And in the falling head test, uh, your soil specimen is again right here. And water flows from top, uh, that's the inlet to uh, downstream, the outlet. Okay. And you have a standpipe here. And in this falling head test, uh, if you look at first, let's look at the head difference. So this H1, this is the initial head difference. So at time T1. And in the test, we can set T1 to zero. Okay, so that's the beginning of the test. And the final, or not the final, but the, the uh, head difference at time T2. Okay. So we call this final, but it's basically any intermediate time you pick. So it's final head difference. And we call that uh, T2. And then T2 minus T1 is T. Okay, so that's the time of the experiment, so time T. And then also, I'm going to define, so first, uh, capital A. So that's a cross-sectional area of the soil specimen. And then I'm going to define small a, and this small a is the cross-sectional area of that standpipe. So with these definitions, and uh, uh, one more here. So this dH, so that's the change of uh, head difference over a small time dt. Okay. So that's basically uh, just a differential quantity. 
and then use Darcy's law. So from Darcy's law, we have the following. Okay. So Darcy's law states small q flow rate equals to k i a. And this k i a, so we have k. And hydraulic gradient, I, by definition, head loss over distance. And so I'm going to use H, so that's head loss over distance L. And L, of course, again, that's the length of your soil specimen times cross-sectional area A. Okay. And this is basically so this is a flow rate in the soil specimen. So this is flow rate in soil specimen. And then this equals to negative small a times h2 minus h1 over t2 minus t1. So this quantity, this expression on the right hand side a times h over t, h2 minus h1 over t2 minus t1. So if you look at this, this is actually the flow rate inside the standpipe. And I added a negative sign in front because uh, we are dropped, the head difference is dropping. So h2 is smaller than h1. To get a positive flow rate, I added a negative sign in there. And this basically says the flow is continuous. Uh, whatever amount of water flows out, out of that standpipe has to flow inside your soil specimen. Okay. So in this last term, H difference over D or T difference, we can write that as DH DT. In this L, um, again, that's the length of the soil specimen. So this gives you a way to solve for K. Okay. So you have K H over L times capital A equals to negative A DH DT. Okay. So you can solve for uh, K by integrating on the side. So if you integrate. So if I move things around a little bit, so let's move DT to one side and H to the other. So if we do DT, so I'm simply moving dt to one side and terms associated with h to the other side. And then I'm going to integrate on both sides. So on the left hand side, it's dt. So I'm integrating from t1 to t2. On the right hand side, it's dh. So I'm integrating from h1 to h2. And then you can solve for uh, k basically. So this gives you the final expression for K. So after you did the integration, you can just move T to one side and K to the other. So you will end up with this final expression. So that is a final expression for permeability in the falling head test. In, in this expression, you notice there is a constant three, uh, 2.303, and that is just because we are uh, converting log natural log to log 10. So, so that constant comes from if you're converting natural log E of some x to log 10, they differ by this constant. That's where that 2.303 comes from. Okay. So this is basically the expression of permeability from falling head test.